السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and we continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings for them and for every one of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant us knowledge that will be beneficial. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min aynin la tadma' wa min qalbin la yakhsha' wa min batnin la yashba' wa min du'a'in la yusma'. O oh Allah, we ask you for knowledge that is beneficial and we ask you to benefit us from the knowledge that you have granted us. O oh Allah, we ask you protection from knowledge that will be made no use of. We ask you protection from eyes that will not cry for your sake. And we ask you for protection from a stomach that will never be filled, from a soul that will never be content. And we ask you to protect us from a prayer that is made that is not answered by you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, confusion today regarding Islam and the Muslims is not only prevalent amongst the non-Muslims but even amongst the Muslims themselves and I'd like to spend the next 45 minutes to an hour discussing certain aspects definitely not every single aspect whereby we find ourselves slightly confused and Without proper knowledge, we will not be able to correct the misconceptions or to cure ourselves of that particular confusion. Because if you take a look at the time when Muhammad وسلم, recited the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people, they were in absolute confusion, but through revelation, confusion was removed. The same ingredient would apply today if we are confused it is through revelation that that confusion will be dealt with and it will be removed because that is the source of all knowledge if you take a look at the Quran it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but one of the biggest problems we have today is the confusion that it is enough for us to recite the Quran so now you have someone melodiously reciting the Qur'an, beautifully reading it, and if you were to ask them, my brother, do you know what it means? And they will tell you, that's not important. That's a big confusion. It's something that's wrong, totally incorrect, absolutely erroneous. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us cure from this disease. And this is why in the Qur'an, in so many places, Allah makes it very clear that this book has been revealed in order for you to ponder very deeply over its verses. How are you going to ponder over the verses of Allah very deeply when you haven't even bothered yourself to know the meanings of the same revelation that is there to remove your entire confusion? If I were to ask you, who is the knower of the unseen? Who is the one who is the owner of all knowledge? You would have to say Allah, my maker and yours. Allah is the one who is the owner of knowledge. <laughs> he is the knower of the unseen completely. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know this. Like in one place in the Quran, Allah says, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ In Surah Yusuf, Allah says, Above each person with knowledge is one who has more knowledge. In fact, you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is known as Al-Alim, the owner of knowledge. But without contemplating over the verses of the Qur'an, we are not going to be able to even start to cure our confusion or our ignorance. And this is why Allah says in Surah Sad, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadakkara ulul albab. A blessed book that we have revealed to you in order for you to contemplate or to 
ponder very deeply over its verses and in order for it to be a reminder for those with sound intellect or with sound mind. So if I would like a reminder, I need to first be reminded through what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called the reminder. Now from this point, I would like to come across very strongly to one and all to say my brothers and sisters, learn the Quran, learn the meaning of revelation. Do not be fooled by anyone, no matter where they are on the globe, who may tell you that you know what, you don't need to go through the meanings of the Quran because your brain and your mind is so backward that you will be confused even more. That's what people are saying. I have come across people who say the Quran is not for a layman, it is only for the knowledgeable. Wallahi, that is absolute drivel. It is nonsense. That is a statement that has no knowledge in it. It has more confusion in it than everything else. How can the Quran only be for an elite group of people? It is through the Quran that you will achieve knowledge. How then can you say they are knowledgeable people without that Quran? Allahu Akbar. It is through the Quran that you will become knowledgeable. So if the Quran was only for the knowledgeable, where did they, where would they have got it from? It doesn't make sense. So it is up to us to go through the book of Allah because what we find today, people fool us totally. I can give you one confusion that is really across the entire globe. You find Muslimin confusing culture with religion. Big confusion. So when people do something, they don't really know, is this because I'm a Muslim or is it because of my culture? And I'm not just speaking of this country. I'm speaking of all over the world. We have the same problem. People do things in the name of religion when it has nothing to do with religion. I give you another example. When we get married, sometimes we make life so difficult for one another based on culture. But if we were to follow the religion, there is no confusion. It is as clear as crystal. You want to follow the deen of Allah, you realize you are only a Malaysian because Allah has chosen that. Not because you are supposed to be a person who looks down upon others. No, you might be proud of your identity, but not the wrong pride. Proud of your identity, meaning I'm happy to be whom Allah has made me. I am. But I do not look down upon others. I use it understanding why Allah has made it. Ya nasu inna khalaqnakum min I have created you from a single male and female and I have made you into different nations, different groups and tribes and different people in order that you may recognize one another. You may recognize one another. Today we have different complexions, different you know, people with different uh, builds perhaps. You know, if you come to Africa perhaps in the western part of Africa, you'll find huge, tall people. As soon as you see someone, you can say, MashaAllah, he is from West Africa. Not because you want to look down upon them, na'udhu billah, but Allah has created this vast difference within the people so that we can respect one another, recognize one another. And I've always said, if every one of us looked alike and we were all the same, perhaps we would need number plates. Allah just like the motor vehicles, all these Toyotas look exactly the same. How do I know it's mine? Because of some difference. And ultimately, even if the color is the same and the interior is the same and the spec is the same, what would happen is we would recognize our vehicle by the number. Allah Akbar. But to make life interesting, we are different people and we belong to different nations and we belong to different tribes this is all a plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things interesting and for your information we have also become inclined within our hearts to different types of people you know some people think oh you see 
I'm a very bad looking person. I'm not using the word ugly, okay? Very bad looking person. Why? Because you know my weight is 80. I'm supposed to only be weighing 60, okay? Do you know that some people may only be attracted to someone who weighs a lot? SubhanAllah. So who told you that you are not good looking? Too much of television. Allah Allah. Too much of television. It confuses you. It makes you think I'm not good looking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made every one of us unique. And we are the best looking we could be. It is our identity. I have spoken to some people who've become depressed after correctional operations within, on their faces or bodies. And they say, I looked better with the small blunders that were on my face than I do now when I've tried to perfect my face through operation. That's because you are confused. You don't understand that identity is chosen by Allah for you. Yes, if there is something wrong, if there is an illness, or if you want to bring back something that is abnormal to normalcy, then definitely it's permissible within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today people are just playing with themselves. They play. You find someone, normal looking person. And after a while, they look absolutely different. What happened? You know, there is new technology. It's known as plastic surgery. Brother, you are totally confused. Plastic surgery, you want to be a plastic person? Subhanallah. You might melt in the sun. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know this life is short. It's not too long. Be happy with what Allah has chosen for you. Like I've said, if there is something wrong, sometimes we do have a challenge regarding health. It is part of our duty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do whatever He has kept in our capacity to cure ourselves of that. But remember one thing, we don't go beyond what is permissible from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people become totally confused. We become upset. Why? Because we have not understood the message of Allah. That is the prime issue of confusion today amongst Muslims to start with. Then, in fact, let me dwell a few moments on the issue of the mixture of culture and religion, where sometimes we make life so difficult for everyone. I give you one more example, something that will point straight at us. A lot of us would be guilty of this. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Someone is interested in your daughter, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Others are struggling to get married, so firstly thank Allah. Remember this, look at it that way. Others are struggling to get a decent guy. Others are struggling to get married. But someone is interested in your daughter, but because his family lives across the river, and we live on this side of the river, or we come from a city, and they come from further down south or up north, we say, no, I don't want, why? Don't you know where they come from? Is that Islam? Come on, where did you come? So now when there is depression in your home, blame yourself. Don't blame Islam. When there is chaos and everyone doesn't talk to you, I would rather the child make a mistake to marry the wrong person than to lose the child's mind. Because today, it is our fault. We blame religion to say, no, Allah has taught us this and that. When we don't understand what we have done, we have just been selective. We choose what suits us because we are worried about our own reputation and prestige. How can my daughter marry this man when he doesn't really have anything? To be honest, your grandfather had nothing. Allahu Akbar. There was a time, my brothers and sisters, when we got our children married, or they, should I say not we, because it, it's hardly happening now. This is what we're trying to inshallah cure by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they, they got their children married knowing that this man is responsible. He has deen and akhlaq. That's all they looked at. And slowly, 20 years later, they purchased their house. Or they bought their first car after 15 years. And that too was a little mini cooper. Allahu Akbar. I, I thought about it because nowadays Mini Coopers are very expensive. But at that time they were a little bit cheaper. Subhanallah. So, today we have a new type of looking at things where you don't get them married unless and until he's a rich man. So what happens? You go to him. What do you have? What do you own? He says, I just have a job, a decent job. Not good enough. Come back when you own a house. By that time, 
There is chaos, confusion. إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ The Prophet says, if a proposal comes in your direction, and the person happens to be one of a decent deen and decent character, then let him get married. If you don't do that, there will be great chaos, corruption, confusion on earth. This is what we are noticing now, confusion. Confused Muslim, why? Because of something that is quite simple that we've made difficult. Then you have a depressive mode, subhanallah, where because of the way we have chosen to bring up our children, when we face reality of the result of our own choices, we quickly blame Allah and we quickly blame the deen. But you the one who sent your child to that school, you the one who decided to live in that neighborhood, you the one who decided to do this for your child and that for your child in the name of love and whatever else. And now when the result of it has come, your child, for example, would like to marry a person from the same community or from the school they went to and they were bombarded with people of the opposite sex every day. You are the one who comes and say no and you don't even know what's going on in society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. Remember something. What differences we may have in terms of where I was born and you were born, they become irrelevant when it comes to the deen and the akhlaq of an individual. You look at that. If they are responsible and if they are upright, no matter how they are living, they will look after your daughter as a gem. There are so many people who are extremely wealthy who have treated their wives like slaves or without any form of respect, no respect. They have no trustworthiness within them. Whereas there are others who perhaps would not be able to afford the luxuries of the world, but they treat their spouses with utmost respect. And they are so happy living in a hut. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness of the dunya and the akhirah. This is something we really need to look into very deeply. Then what happens? Now going back to learning the Quran and studying the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will lead us to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Great confusion today. People say, this is the Quran. That's it. I take it, it's revelation. Yes, I've heard the verse of the Quran. Allah says, أَفَلَا تَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Will they not ponder very deeply over the verses of the Quran? Or are its locks on their hearts? So we say, no, Alhamdulillah, I am the one who's going to look into the Quran and see its meaning. But as for the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't want to look into it. Why? Because it's confusing. What is so confusing about it, my brother, my sister? If you read the Quran correctly, it will lead you to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ Whatever the messenger has given you in terms of instruction, follow it. Whatever he has prohibited, stay away from it and fear Allah. What that means is the messenger too has come with revelation from Allah. Don't let someone fool you and confuse you by saying this is the Quran and we are going to sit with it. And whatever is not in the Quran, we don't want to take it because that Quran leads you to certain other things. So much so that the Quran leads you to asking those with knowledge. What about the Prophet? Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find this verse in more than one place in the Quran. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those who have knowledge, who have knowledge of revelation, if you don't know. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, when you are reading the Quran, and you have a question that crops up naturally within you, regarding a certain verse or what Allah has said, don't attempt to just answer it on your own without seeking clarification and deeper understanding from those who have been taught by a chain of narrators going down from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they have solid knowledge. Then they will be able to tell you, listen, if this is the confusion, then this is how you should look at it. And if you want, ask a few more people because today sometimes we could be making a few errors in our understanding. So ask those with sound knowledge, get some knowledge, listen to what they have to say. Whoever backs themselves up with revelation, whether it is the Quran or the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are more worthy of following than those who don't do that. Remember that. 
So this is why we say, don't allow yourself to insult Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while claiming to be a follower of the Qur'an. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا Whoever is going to dispute with the messenger, whoever is going to pull themselves away from the messenger's instruction and from what he has declared. After the guidance has come to him, after guidance has been made clear to him, and he follows the path which is separate from the path of the true believers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he has engaged in something very grave. Do you know the meaning of nuwallihi ma tawalla? It has several meanings. One of them is, we beautify that which is not beautiful for him, so he looks at it as that which is beautiful. So the truth is made to be looked at as false, and the falsehood is made to be looked at as good and true. Why? Because they have fought the messenger. They did not want to respect the dignity and honor of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. So Allah says, for them is a, is a really difficult abode in hellfire. We don't want that to happen to us. Allah says, what a bad place to be returned to or to go to. We wouldn't like to go to a bad place. But remember one thing, part and parcel of the respect of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to study his sunnah as well. And inshallah, we will be talking about the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of our talks. An important topic, a matter that we need to look into very deeply. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us of the confusion that people have today. Or people are trying to promote and they say, just take the Quran and that's it. How will you understand the message of the Quran if you haven't looked at the way it was explained by the one whom it was revealed to in particular? Imagine you have a constitution of the land and the people who have made the constitution are not consulted as to how exactly to interpret it. Do you expect the others to know better? So you say, I accept the constitution, but those who wrote it, or those who brought it forth, or those who have come up with it, we don't even want to look in their direction. We will come up with our own little understanding. No, it's not fair. We need to know how to look at it. And we need to understand that Allah has instructed us to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. My brothers and sisters, as we progress studying the Quran, shaitan comes to try and confuse us. Another major confusion. What is it? The issue of hypocrisy, where shaitan confuses us by making us feel that the minute I have outwardly turned to Allah, then I do not need to worry about the inside. I don't need to develop my character. I don't need to look at others with respect. So we become very arrogant. Why? Because I am a Muslim who is in salah five times a day. The others are not here. So much so that, okay, we do have a hadith that warn us about not fulfilling salah. We know that. We all know that. If I were to ask you, how many salah are there in the day? Every one of us would say five salah a day. We would all acknowledge that. And we do know that it is very detrimental for our very Iman and belief in Allah if we were to abandon even a single one of them. So become strong, my brothers and sisters. However, whilst becoming strong, we should treat others in a way that we understand where we were ourselves and where we would like them to get. And this is why one of the issues of confusion is when a person has been rightly guided at the age of 40, they see the light. A lot of us sometimes 25, 30, 35, 40, sometimes 50, 60, we begin to see the light. And when we see the light, we become so hard with everyone else that we expect them to see the light in five seconds. Five seconds. But my brother, you took 40 years to come to the deen. My sister, it took you up to the age of 50 to realize you've got to cover your hair. And today I know we desperately seek to guide others. But remember, your duty is to deliver the goods and that's it. 
Your duty is to try to convey the message and that's it. The rest is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We begin to hate people whom we think are not on the same religious level. That alone is a confusion of the devil who makes you think you are religious when in actual fact you are worse than those maybe whom you are looking down upon. So don't underestimate people. This is why Allah says in the verse I've already read it. The most honored from amongst you in the eyes of Allah are those who are the most conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who knows who is more conscious of Allah? Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Subhanallah, don't ever put a chip on your own shoulder by claiming that you are the pure, you are the clean, you are the one who is the highest. Don't ever try and purify your own self in the eyes of others. Allah knows who is more conscious of Him. Allah is aware. There could be sometimes a person, and we know this from several narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom Allah has guided at the last minute before they've died. And Allah's guided them last minute at their deathbed, just prior to the moment of death. They were guided rightly. Believe me, they are more fortunate than a person who may have led his entire life according to the deen, but they were misguided last minute. A man who leads his life for 70 years in a beautiful way, and because of some silly reason, or one of these qualities of arrogance, or something dirty that may have happened, may Allah forgive us all and grant us steadfastness. Last minute, turning, Allahu Akbar, turning in the wrong direction. And this is why, never go back on your achievement. Don't worry. Whatever you've achieved, continue. Don't think for a moment, and this is another point that we need to talk about, that if you are on the path, and the correct path, that there will be no obstacle on your path. No. The correct path has a lot of obstacles on it, because those are the tests. When I say obstacles, I mean challenges. I don't mean that which is bad, but that which will make you even better if you understand what the straight path is. It's a straight path and I need to tread upon it. A little bit of traffic, it's okay. You know, yesterday we had a talk in Shah Alam. So some of the brothers told me, Sheikh, we need to go there very early. I said, okay, why? What's the story? They gave me the story. <laughs> but we still had to use the same highway we still had to use the same route. There was no option. So either you adjust this way or that way, but you're still on the same path. You still have to get to where you are getting. You know, they say apricot jam is a good jam. Strawberry jam is a good jam. <laughs> but when you come to Malaysia, there's a new type of a jam, a traffic jam. <laughs> that jam cannot be spread on butter. Allahu Akbar. With butter on the bread. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. But that doesn't mean you don't go to work and you contact the people at work to say, you know what, there was jam. They'll tell you, you should have got up early for breakfast, you, had a, you would have had another jam. You cannot use that excuse, it's a silly excuse for not getting to work. The same applies with us, we have a pathway, Siratul Mustaqim. It is a straight path, Allah calls it the straight path. It is clear cut, there is no confusion on that path, but there will be challenges on the path. They may slow you down slightly and then they will speed you up by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah says very clearly, do you think that you are not going to be tested? Do you think that Allah is just going to leave you? And this is why there is a confusion. I have come across people who are sick or ill. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those who are ill. People who are struggling financially. People who are struggling in their marriages. People who are struggling in their relations with their children and parents and so on. People who have various forms of challenges in life. And they look and they say, you know what? People have told me this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's penalizing you for something. The reality is they themselves are confused. How can someone come and tell you that you are sick? It's a penalization from Allah. Every one of us has been sick at some stage in our lives, whether it's a little flu or something else. We agree. Does that mean, hey, Allah has penalized all of us, punished? It is your opportunity to get close to Allah through sickness and illness and the needs that we have for Allah. He makes us closer to Him. That was a gift of Allah for you. You recognized your maker because He made you go through some challenge. 
So don't be confused. People become depressed and they lose their faith in Allah. A few days ago, someone said, call out to your Allah, let him bring the aircraft. A'udhu Billah. Are you not sensitive? Are you not sensitive of the feelings of those who are affected? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant a miracle to us. Amen. But my brothers and sisters, be careful. Call out to your Allah, they say, to bring it back. Well, to be honest with you, I answered the man in another way. I said, what do you believe in? Call out to whoever you believe in and let's see if he brings it along. I can throw it back at you exactly the same. One man told me we are sick because we are Muslimin. I said, I know a lot of people who follow other faiths who have even deeper illnesses than us. And the same sickness. It's not franchised or it's not only because you're a Muslim that you're going through this. There are others who don't even believe in the faith who are going through perhaps the same or worse. But it's, it depends how you look at it. It depends how you look at your challenge. So a person with Iman will have the same sickness as a person without Iman, but he is going through it in a content fashion. It brings him closer to Allah, whereas the one without Iman, it drifts him further away. This is why we say one of the issues of confusion is when we have a crisis, when we have a problem, we need to resolve it Bearing in mind, it's an opportunity to get close to Allah. We do not resolve it getting closer to shaitan. You know, sometimes when a person is sick and may Allah protect us, may Allah grant us cure. I'm just using one example, but it can happen even to those who have had financial difficulty or any other form of difficulty. Let's use the issue of sickness because everyone at some stage gets sick. So we go to the doctor, we try this, we try that. Then someone comes and tell us, okay, try this, try something else, you know, try this medication, perhaps which is herbal. And Alhamdulillah, we try it and sometimes we are cured. But sometimes people are not cured and they don't understand it's the plan of Allah. And Allah has kept your duty to look after your health. And at a certain point, Allah takes away even those who are very healthy. You will still go away. You will still have to leave. So what happens is after a while in our desperation to get better, we begin to do things that are totally unacceptable. And the excuse we use, but I need to get better. It's my health. Come on. No matter who is going to kill me, it's okay. Ultimately, I say Bismillah, then I engage in hocus pocus. Wow. Is that what it is? Is that what I should be doing? So what was the belief in Allah? When Allah says, وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانُ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Allahu Akbar. People call Sulaiman a disbeliever. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says, Sulaiman was not a disbeliever. But the devils were the ones who disbelieved by teaching people magic. So there is an acknowledgement in Islam of magic. It exists. It is there. But to partake in it, to engage in it, to do it, and to be associated with it is what is totally prohibited. It can actually take you out of the fold of belief. In Allah. So it is there. The jinn exists. We don't deny that. This is why the last two surahs of the Quran, if only we knew the meanings of it, we would then be able to understand and we won't be confused. But the problem is, we read, do you know what it means? The problem is, I just know that it will give me protection from the devil. But find out what it means as well. And you need to know when you read it, concentrate on the meaning. Then you see your confusion will go. Because there are people who read the surahs and they continue reading everything. But they are the first people who go to witch doctors and fortune tellers. And they are the ones who would claim that it's because I'm in a desperate situation that I'm doing this. But Allah says, who is there besides Allah that responds the call of the distressed when he is in distress? Who, who responds the call of the one who is in distress besides Allah? It is Allah who responds correctly. And this is why my brothers and sisters, remember when you are in distress, 
Do not turn to those besides Allah in a way that will displease Allah. You might want to go to the doctor, you might want to ask someone's help, you might want to seek financial help, but not in a way that will displease Allah. And in order to know what displeases Allah, you just need to read the Quran. We were talking about jinn a few minutes ago, and look, there is a surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Jinn. But the problem is we know that there is a surah called Al-Jinn, we've never been through its meaning. That's why I started off by saying, go through the meanings of the Quran, because nobody will be able to con you or confuse you, because now you know. Someone says, but you can do this. Say, but hang on, I read the Quran and I've come across a verse that says this. They'll just look at you and say, oh, oh. Why? Because now they know they cannot lie to you. So Allah says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَهَقًا Allah speaks about how there were people from mankind who sought the assistance of the jinn kind. So the jinn kind led them further astray, further astray. So do you still want to go and seek the help of the jinn kind? Well, look what the Quran says. They will lead you further astray. You know, I came across a man who met me and he told me, he says, you know, I have a jinn. I said, good for you. <laughs> Did you rub one of these lanterns before? He said, I'm not joking. So I said, okay, so what's the big deal? He says, say what you want, I get it done for you. I said, I don't want that type of cash or that type of help or that type of thing. I worship Allah, this is my test. He says, but I promise you, I can bring you what you like. You want to eat the dates of Saudi Arabia? I can bring them from Medina as fresh as ever here and now. I looked at him and I know that it's possible because he, he, there are jinn and jinn, uh, it is confirmed in the Sharia that they exist and we know that. And subhanallah, they do possess people and things do happen. You read the Quran and you'll understand. You'll understand the exact position of it. But to be enticed by that and say, yes, let's go for it. Have the dates of Medina. Oh, let's go. Next thing, plop, the date comes down. And you're having the date. What do you think? No, the date didn't come. When I was, I refused, subhanallah. I told him, no way. He says, but this jinn I have is a Sahabi. Sahabi. He's a Muslim. He has met so and so, so and so, and so many different uh, companions, and he has taken hadith directly. Okay? So I said, so now, he said, so he's given me narrations. And you know how it says, uh, An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, and their name, chain of narrations, and so on. This man says, bugger all that. It's me through the jinn to the Prophet. Straight. So you can add and subtract in your deen as and when you wish because a certain man told you that he saw the Prophet through a jinn or he saw him in a dream and he forgot 50 hadith and he quickly gave them to me. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, I'm shocked that people can believe that. If that was the case, we can all start dreaming. And every one of us will say, well, I had a dream. And you know what? Uh, there was a message that was forgotten at the time. So now what has happened is it was given to me. Don't you read the Quran where Allah says, "Al-yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina." This day I have completed your faith. I have perfected your deen. I have completed it. And my gift upon you is total. It is complete. There is nothing to add and subtract in the deen. It's all done. The, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the companions, "Have I delivered the message?" They said, yes, you have. He says, Allahumma fashhad. Oh Allah, bear witness. I conveyed it. It's over. Ashhadu annaka qad ballaghta risalata wa addayta al-amanata. We bear witness. And they bore witness that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has delivered the message. And he has delivered the amana, the trust that was placed on his shoulders. But subhanallah, here comes a man who tells you, this jinn is a sahabi. So I told him, do you know what? Let me tell you. That the jinn are liars. They lie. Don't believe even one word. Not even one. And the Quran says, Ya ma'shar al jinni qad istakthartum min al ins. Read about what Allah says regarding the jinn and the ins, mankind and jinn kind. Allah says, O oh jinn kind, you have now made enough fools of mankind. One of the translations. 
قد استكثرتم من الانس you have now you know you've got a lot of your followers amongst mankind we follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so on the day of judgment you will find the two of them or jinn kind and mankind separating ways and this is why allah says وقال اولياء من الانس ربنا استمتع بعضنا ببعض وبلغنا اجلنا الذي اجلت لنا قال النار مثواكم خالدين فيها الا ما شاء الله powerful verse where allah says on that day they will disassociate themselves from one another and they will say you know what we just enjoyed each other's company for a while in this world and we enjoyed the give and take between us but allah was forgotten the message of allah was removed from the equation so as a result allah says annaru mathwaakum that fire is the abode may allah protect us who wants to go into the fire who wants to be entering jahannam we hear about it may allah protect us from jahannam if you want to be protected from jahannam you need knowledge of how to be protected from it don't just believe anything and everything people tell you that you know what and this is another very very serious issue i firmly believe that 100% of the time when someone tells you that someone has done black magic upon you and they issue you with a name the name is wrong you may have black magic you may be a possessed person but the name they gave you is absolute nonsense totally nonsense and you there will be a little bit of politics between you and that person because the jinn gives the name to whoever it is he can be a sheikh as pious as he might be in terms of reading salah in the first saf but believe me the confusion is he thinks the jinn are telling the truth the jinn are telling you a lie total lie complete false they are they want to create chaos amongst you your family members especially the jinn one of their main aims is to destroy your family so nine times out of 10 when you are affected by something here will come a big sheikh and he'll tell you you know you are possessed maybe that might be right we still give credit sometimes maybe to that and then he will tell you one of your own relatives did it and he might even give you a name but that name will be of someone who's close to you in relation or in friendship why because go to the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yata'allamuna minhuma ma yufarriquna bihi bayna al-mar'i wa zawjihi this devil teaches people how to split husband and wife this is what he teaches why because the core if the core is split there is confusion in the rest of the family i don't talk to my sister for 20 years someone told me why because some sheikh told me she did magic and believe me the sister is the furthest away from being accused and another thing is one day you saw the sister driving past a certain village and you said what was she doing there she went to see the witch doctor in order to engage in the magic a'udhu billah shaitan is confusing you playing with your mind do you not believe in allah don't you know why the last two surahs of the quran were revealed they were revealed to protect yourselves from this type of item and ourselves as as believers so why don't you recite it why don't you have conviction in allah allah will cure you continue in the correct path don't fall by destroying relations with those who are totally innocent solely because one man claimed to know the unseen believe me like i said he got his information from the jinn if he did and the jinn they lie and they are laughing now laughing to say wow we got them exactly where we wanted to get them where well the brothers accusing the sister and the in-laws and so on and these people are accusing each other and the ummah is now in chaos why every one of us accusing the other you look at the sister innocent person with a lot of goodness and sincerity and you run in another another direction as a sister in islam subhanallah because you have a dirty belief in your heart regarding someone who's totally innocent why you just believe the jinn so where is allah in the equation where is allah these are innocent people and i know people who are affected are so passionate that even what i'm saying now they say this man doesn't know because we are passionate we desperately need to blame someone i give you another example we have said and we continue to say that negative speculation is haram do you know that you know a few days ago i said regarding the aircraft may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a miracle i'm going to talk about it because it's the topic of the day it's a current issue and we will say that which is responsible inshallah 
I said speculation is wrong. So someone says, well, you have to speculate in order to try and find out. We're not talking of that type of speculation where you are thinking of probabilities in a decent way. We're talking of dirty, negative speculation that is full of filth. That's what we're talking about. Now, what has happened to us? We find ourselves wanting so desperately to blame someone for something we really don't know. So we accuse innocent people in the process. And this is what happens. And we call it, you know what, subhanallah, yes, 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 it's fine. That must have happened. Tomorrow someone will do the same to you. Then what? Then what? How can your desperation make you be unjust? Imagine a person stole at your house. You don't know who stole. So you stand by your gate and you look at the people and you find a man from Nigeria. And just because you think that, okay, this man is Nigerian, let's now just blame him. He's the thief. Whereas some of the most pious people come from that country. Do you know that? When I visited, I was shocked to see the masajid, which were full choking choco block. And I was shocked to say, Subhanallah, look at how beautiful these people are. I learned to love the people and the place so much so that I would go back there any day, Subhanallah. But because we have sometimes become confused by the devil in our desperation to blame someone for our problem, we start doing the wrong thing. And remember this, it's wrong. And the same way, as I was mentioning a few moments ago, we begin to believe the devil, literally the devil, shaitan, iblis's army. And they come to us and say, this person did that and that person did this. And this is why you are sick. And that's why. And then what they say is, look, I will do something and you will be cured. So subhanallah, we go and they do something and we are cured. Well, if what they did was outside of what Allah has asked us to do, outside of that which was permissible, then remember, no matter how cured you have become, you failed your test. You failed your test. Some people get their driver's license just because they bribed the examiner. No matter what. You are the one causing the accidents on the road. Allah. May Allah grant us goodness. I don't think it happens in this country. Okay, the laughter means something else. Allah. I still believe it doesn't happen in this country. Allah Akbar. But in some countries it does. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah protect us. You might pass your examination, but in reality you fail. And you know it. You know it. You fail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us really to understand the plan of Allah. May Allah cure us. May He make us those who have sound knowledge. Without sound knowledge, we will not be able to be from those who understand what's going on. We won't. Because you need knowledge. Innama shifa'ul ayyi. That's su'al. Indeed, the cure of ignorance is to ask, to seek, and to seek from the correct source. And in order to protect yourself from chaos and confusion, Go back to what Allah has revealed. Can I tell you why? I'm going to meet with Allah and so are you. Don't you agree? Aren't we looking forward to the day when we meet our maker? Subhanallah. Today we get excited when we meet someone who might just be a little bit popular and so on. And we get excited. Wow. I'm the one who made me and you, we are more excited to see him. But when we see him, will we be able to say, I read your book, which you sent for me. <laughs> will we be able to say that? Allahu Akbar. You know, I am just a mere mortal. I'm just a human being. Perhaps one of the worst of the lot here. But I tell you something. Sometimes people embarrass me by saying, you know what? Ah, Sheikh, how are you? I've seen all your videos and I like this. Relax, take it easy. I'm just a human being. But have you read the book of Allah? And they say, but my Sheikh in the masjid told me it's haram. So when you meet Allah, will you say, Ya Allah, I really wanted to read your message to me, but my Shaykh told me that it's haram. So does your Shaykh own paradise or hell? He doesn't. You need to understand, yes, we will respect him and we will, we will take from him the good. But when they are making a mistake, that's where we differ. You read the word of Allah, that is Allah's message to you. You are brought into existence. You are such a powerful person. You have a mind and a brain that is so sophisticated. You have a health system that operates far more sophisticated than any apparatus in existence, subhanallah. And yet with that mind that now is so technologically advanced, you still want to say, I'm not going to read the word of Allah. Come on, come on. It's not going to confuse you. It will remove your confusion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He grant us ease.
My brothers and sisters, as you can see, the issues that confuse us are many, many. I want to end with one serious one. I spoke about it last night, I touched on it. But I need to talk about it because it's the problem across the globe. One of the biggest confusions is people think that all the non-Muslims need to be killed. It's a confusion. In fact, in reality, it is created by the devil. And sometimes we think we're so pious that those who don't think exactly as we think do not deserve to be living. That is not Islam. That is unacceptable. That is definitely deviation, the height of deviation. Subhanallah, we are passionate to convey to the masses the true message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of tolerance, of hope, of reaching out to people, different people, different faiths, different belongings, different inclinations, reach out even to the enemy in a positive way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. The problem with us is we don't reach out to people and we feel okay because this person has hurt me, it's over. It's over. I'm going to make sure that I destroy this and destroy that and do that. What are you talking about? No religion preaches that type of behavior. Remember, you resolve the matter, resolve the problem, talk about it, make sure that you reach out to people tomorrow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it very clearly in the Quran. Those Hypocrites and the enemies, the, we're talking here about open, outright enemies. Allah says if they turn, repent, they fulfill their salah, they engage in the good deeds, they automatically become your brethren in faith. They become your brothers in faith. Subhanallah, after a person was my enemy, how can he become my brother? Allah says, yes, he becomes your brother in faith. And this is why Allah says, Asallahu ayyajala baynakum wa bayna al-ladhina adaytum minhum mawaddah wallahu qadeer wallahu ghafoorur rahim Allah is all capable and all able to create love between you and the one you hate. That's what Allah says. You dislike someone with a passion, your enemy. Allah says, I have the capacity to create love between the two of you. It has happened, it does happen, and it will always happen. Allah says, Wallahu Qadir, Allah is all able. Wallahu Ghafoorur Rahim, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Look at Abu Sufyan, radiallahu an. Look at Khalid ibn al Walid, radiallahu an. Inshallah, we'll be speaking about the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their sacrifice. But to be honest, those were enemies of Islam, enemy number one. And what happened? They became related powerfully through the deen and even through marriage. Allahu Akbar. So this is why those who don't look at others with the correct eye have not understood the message of the deen. We are peace-loving, peaceful people who have been spreading the deen in a beautiful way through our character, through reaching out to people, different types of people of different inclinations, they have seen the goodness in the deen through that. And we ask Allah to continue to use us in this positive way, rather than become people who are so negative and so closed that even amongst us as Muslimin, if I have two or three differences with you, I immediately call you a person who's going to Jahannam. And without a joke, I've seen it happening. I gave a talk some time back and I made mention of it. Once I was with someone and every little while we pass people, he looks at them and says, Jahannam. Jannam. Jannam, you know? And I'm thinking, hey, relax. Do you own, are you the gatekeeper here of hell or what? <laughs> Subhanallah. You own this hell? May Allah grant us ease. That is the wrong way of looking at people. It, you will never solve matters. You will never be able to resolve the issues that you are trying to resolve. In fact, it shows that you are not serious about helping mankind. It shows that you're not serious. But slowly but surely we need to understand if we love one another for the sake of Allah, we will be able to reach out to one another in a beautiful way. Correct one another in a way that we get each other thinking. We get each other thinking. Today we've spoken of a lot of items. I hope and I pray that you think about it very seriously and deeply. And I've tried to be as respectful as possible. 
Although I was passionate when it came to the issue of blaming people because I've seen it overtaking us. And it overtakes us with a good name in the sense that in inverted commas, people think, oh, that good man told me something. But if the good man told you something bad, then that is his human weakness or it is his mistake. That's what it is. A bad man tells you something good. Subhanallah, it's possible. And a good man tells you something bad. That's also possible. None of us are perfect. Perfection is for Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu was granted that in terms of the perfection of the message. And even the individual, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we had a perfect individual, perfect example in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the rest of us, we will be heading towards perfection the more we turn towards Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will be drifting further away from perfection the more we drift further away from them. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.